Welcome to another episode of Pure Bliss and Balance, a place to help you and your family have your most resilient and happy life. I'm your host, Jennifer, and today we're going to discuss a parent's perspective on raising a child with ADHD and helping them thrive in the most amazing ways. Having said that, our special guest today is an incredible mother of four beautiful young children, one that was diagnosed with ADHD. Our special guest is also a trained scientist and researcher who spent many years struggling to find the necessary resources to best support her child. So she is now on a mission to help global family and empower parents who are on a similar path to what she's been through, through her services and programs. So without ado, let's now introduce you to our special guest, and her name is Veronica Hunter. So glad to have you here today, Veronica, and looking forward to hearing more about your amazing story and the amazing things that you do for our families in the world to give our families the support they need in a world where there's sometimes a lot of information and a lot of overwhelm. Thank you so much for having me here. Through that journey, that adventure you've had, you've created this wonderful program. Can we discuss a little bit more about that? Love to learn more. Sure, sure. So actually, I have a, a background in science and biotech and, and engineering. And I'm, I guess, one of those people that just is curious about life, which is always fun. <laughs> but um, I left that to have a family when I had twins that to start off with and uh, grew my family to be a family of four actually in four years, which is a lot all together at once. But a few years down the line, we, my older children were five and I had a one, a three-year-old and a one-year-old then. And I just noticed that life was a little bit more crazy for us than perhaps for, uh, it just seemed nuts, right? Like, so for example, my, my little guy, he would wake up in the morning. He's go, go, go from the very beginning. I had to jump out of bed and, and tie up all of the, the curtain rods and put them out of the front, make sure all the wires were out of place, turn bookshelves backwards because or else <laughs> he would climb bookshelves. Um, it was impossible to keep him near me going in public places and hands off of things and stuff like that. So um, ended up, I attended a conference on not the best non-medicated treatments for ADHD. And I was like, this sounds like my child. So uh, identified and had him diagnosed. He does have ADHD. Fast forward four years. And I was still felt like I was finding what's the best way to support families with this. And um, just then hearing stories of, of other families that were still struggling, perhaps where I was four years earlier. Um, and I just really wanted to help them because uh, what I had learned in the course of that four years, it just doesn't have to be that hard. And that there, that there really is a lot of help out there for families that have children with ADHD and that the journey doesn't have to be so convoluted. And like you mentioned earlier, information overwhelm um, with a little, with lack of direction. So what I put together for families that have children with ADHD is kind of a roadmap for, for how to help them and from a whole person perspective. So um, I think that's one of the big things that I've noticed out there is that there's areas of specialty, which is fantastic, but as parents looking for our children and, and how do we do the best for our families and these children who are unique and our unique family situation, that, that we care about the parents, we care about the whole person before us, right? We care about their, their physical development, emotional development, um, um, the spiritual development, how, do the, how are they, what is their resilience level, uh, the health of the body. So we need to educate ourselves in all of those areas. So what I'm putting to, or have put together covers all of those spaces really. And, and so that each person can put together their unique um, plan and path for their family to help their families flourish and enjoy each other. Again, not be stuck in stress and overwhelm without feeling lost as to how to get out of it. Yeah, and that's, that's so powerful in a day and age where life is so busy to begin with, especially in Western society where busy is the norm. And then when parents are faced with their children having this added concern, not having the tools to be able to help our children can be just that added overwhelm that's, as you said, unnecessary 
if, if given the right tools and support in global community. And I just love what you're doing in terms of giving our global family that resource so so that they can just tap right into it get what they know save themselves time save themselves so much overwhelm there were a few areas that i guess i had kind of wished i had known from the beginning and and were only kind of gained with experience for example just the awareness of of skill development for children so some examples of this i watched a 12 year old once walking on a, a fallen tree. We were outside going on a hike and the child was about 12 years old and she was a ha having a hard time maintaining balance on this on this log and, and falling off. And so then some of the other kids around her because kids are kids and they don't necessarily think before speaking said something that made her feel badly about that. And it, I just looked at that situation and thought like, this is so un like unfortunate, you know, all around because of the social dynamic that was happening there too. And there really is support for um, a child struggling with that. But the only reason that I knew that is because I had gotten occupational therapy or been working with an occupational therapist for my child for a few years. So when I looked at this, this child having a hard time in that, like I know an occupational therapist would be able to help her solve that problem and perhaps even very quickly. So one thing is just the awareness, like that became part of the mission too, is to build awareness that there are um, people out there who can help children build skills and that, that kids are um, not trying to be defiant, disobedient, um, whatever types of, of words, but that to raise the awareness that when they are struggling, it's because they really are struggling and there's generally a skill deficit. And as the grownups, Part of our job is to figure out what that de deficit is and how do we help support it in some way. Um, so I see this also all the time in, in Facebook groups just that I was participating with and support for the community and for my family too. Um, just that, that much of the recommend, um, recommendations, they kind of start, if you think of like a learning period, pyramid or how do we build these skills, the types of advice that I got very often started at the top of that pyramid and that learning pyramid. And in reality, there's so much that you can do at the, this foundational level. And if you address this foundational level first, then you then the rest of these things start to come into play and, and or move so much faster. Mm -hmm. So um, I see this inside of Facebook groups where people are saying like, my child, my child is maybe getting psychotherapy and I've spoken with occupational therapists, for example, too, they say, my ch the children are getting psychotherapy for a really long time, but in reality, their bodies are needing some help with the with regulation at a body level. And once we address that, then they can go for like a psychotherapy type of um, help if they need it, and they'll make more progress. So then just the children will feel more successful in themselves and greater self-esteem and more healing for the family and less financial stress and more time. So um, I think that's all behind part of the mission too, is education and awareness around uh, what are some of the fundamental things to address first um, so that we can help the children to feel successful, remove the roadblocks that um, are absolutely addressable for them. This is some really, really poignant aspects to consider and so true, you know, having lived through it and you can identify those pain points that aren't being addressed uh, just through, you know, the, the, the resources that are currently there, say, and it's great, you know, being a mom and having gone through that, you're able to support those that are just starting the journey, especially um, go through less pain, less anxiety, less overwhelm. And I love the way you bring back mindfulness. As you know, I'm the mindfulness specialist <laughs> and I really appreciate you know, how you as a mom empower your children, empower global community to bring it right back to the beginnings, which is a mindfulness approach to, to addressing a concern. And then we deal with that as a community. And, and there's those steps that, that you need to start with before you go to the top part, because if we don't have that foundation, then nothing is going to work because we don't have things in context. And uh, so, so poignant in terms of being able to effectively make the changes we're looking for and find the improvement we're looking for on a long term basis with true enduring change, as opposed to little incremental changes that only last a little while. 
uh, yeah, really powerful stuff. So thanks yeah. for sharing that. <laughs> I've absolutely found that mindfulness is, is one of those key foundational items for us too. And I'm sure you've shared all about the benefits and how wonderful it can be for people and to get out of fight and flight mode and in which is <laughs> so relevant <laughs> these days, I feel like. So I'm very glad that you do that. And uh, also just to build um, the idea that you have and you've mentioned and emphasized around building community. And that's so important for the people that have gone before us and that have like really excellent mindfulness practice that they can share the impact that that's had for, for their lives so, and inspire kind of the next generation of people to take on practices such as that. So yeah, thank you for your work in community because without that, like we need those, those beacons of light and the voices that speak up as to what is possible to, um, to inspire all of us to come to into that fullness that life really is. Let's discuss what ADHD is from the parent's perspective. I think that awareness of it came in the sense of no, noticing that it was just a bit more difficult for my child than, than perhaps other kids. And it was harder for me, like parenting seemed more challenging and that I would go out and I would try to, to read this parenting book and pick up a parenting tool or strategy. And I found that it just didn't work and that things didn't make um, sense. For example, there can be a, a delay between or understanding cause and effect. And so, for example, if I put my child into a timeout, um, he would turn back and look at me, but you put me here. And I try to explain the behavior like ended up in a timeout. I've since learned other strategies that are more effective, but what I knew at the time, like that was it. Um, and so he'd be like, but you put me here. And there was just this disconnect in understanding like the logical reasoning around it. So, so ADHD, what it is, is that the prefrontal cortex in the brain is developing actually slower, prioritizing time, organization, um, emotional regulation, all of those types of things. So those skills are generally delayed and the presentation looks different depending on, on each person and what is going on. Um, so there is ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but there's two types. One is lack of attention and one is hyperactive. And then there's a third when somebody presents with both of those. So some things that are, are, are actually different is that certain parts of the brain are, are literally different sizes, um, developed differently, that, that the neurotransmitters that go help the brain to, to do its job are off, which is why medications can sometimes be helpful because they're affecting the neurotransmitters that are, are going on in the brain. One key that I found that wasn't so one of those surface level things is, is that um, functional testing can actually help to, and to address what might be an underlying uh, medical challenge that is causing those neurotransmitters to be off. So for my son, for example, after years of, of, of looking, we found out that he has pyrrole disorder. Um, he actually has several things that when we address, help him substantially to like his body to come down and it just addressed the, the biochemistry inside of his body that then enables his brain to function a little bit better. And we can then support um, some of the executive function with time and organization and expressive language challenges we can support those way better. But one, for example, is pyrrole disorder. So the mitochondria excrete pyrroles and those in order to, for the body to get rid of them, they're not bad, but for the body to get rid of them, it uses up all of the B vitamins in the body. Well, B vitamins are critical for um, the creation of neurotransmitters. So the brain literally doesn't have those neurotransmitters available to function properly. But if you supplement with B vitamins, then those neurotransmitters can be made and then they're available. And then that relieves a lot of the ADHD type symptoms um, and just helps a lot. So I think that's one of the parts of the mission is like, if there is something like that, every human is unique, but if as a parent, I can find that thing for my child that can help them so much for the rest of their lives, then I wanna be able to do that. So that's one of my missions is to empower families to be able to, to investigate uh, what are the possibilities and address them if they're present really amazing stuff again you know I, the perspective of a parent and then the perspective of the scientist i appreciate that because your background is all about science so i can see that your journey when you first 
started, you were probably researching like, like all the time <laughs> from your perspective, right? From a scientific perspective. And that's, that's really key in terms of, you know, if a person wants to find the right accurate information in a, in a place where there's a lot of misinformation out there, it's really good to know that they can reach out to someone like you who has a scientific perspective as well as a parent's perspective, because that means you've vetted it. You've you've gone the extra mile to make sure that whatever you are learning about and that you're finding results with is because you've lived it, you've experienced it, and you've researched it thoroughly. Uh, very, very good to know, very comforting, because <laughs> there is there is a lot of misinformation out there. There is, and we all want um, to kind of alleviate <laughs> the stress. And so we're all, it's often that parents are looking for what's the silver bullet, so to speak, that will that will solve the, the one challenge. And sometimes I describe that as thinking that like uh, being a chef in a kitchen in order to be a good chef, all you need is the one knife set and then you'll be there. Um, and that's not necessarily true, it's, it's an, it's an accumulation of skills too so um i think you you we try to find the things that we can eliminate and we realize that the big picture is that there's a lot of different elements to support here and skills to learn great great advice thanks for sharing thank you <laughs>